Hello, my schoolers. I am Abiola. You are welcome to the My School channel. We will be tackling the Jam CBT Pass question for Biology Year 2019. We will be providing with step by step solutions and explanations to each of the questions available for the year. So, in this clip, I will be solving questions number 1 to number 20. Make sure you check the links in the description below to get access to the next videos we will be releasing. So join me as we tackle question number one. Which of the following is a behavioral ad adaptation that protects prey from predators? So which behavior that animals or living things adapt with, okay, that protects them against predation? All right, so let's go through the options. Option A is abination, that is when a particular living organism, okay, they try to survive a cold period, a cold season. For instance, bears in their caves. So we have bee shedding of leaves. This is also done by trees, okay, where they try to remove leaves from their body parts so that they can survive ash condition of weather. Probably um, when there is not enough rain, the dry seasons. Okay, then we have C, secreting irritating fluid. I can give you a, a very good example, like for instance, your honey badger. Like for instance, we also have your bombardier b They secrete this fluid that may be toxic. Sometimes they are hot. They just have a way. There's a kind of mechanism or toxins in it that chases away prey from them or repels predators from them, rather. Then we have option D, dormancy. Dormancy is just similar to hibernation, whereby a, a particular seed, okay, they try to stay alive by being less active so going through our options together option c is very correct secreting irritating fluid to repel predictors and for protection it's an adaptation behavior so option c is correct so here we have question number two the period of inactivity seen in some animals during long period of heat or drought is what migration is movement of animals from one place to the other probably in search for food, in search for water, in search for space. Estivation is a period of inactivity in animals due to ash weather condition of heat or drought over a long period of time. Okay, examples include your snails and some fishes and fishes generally. We have hibernation. It's also a long period of inactivity in certain animals. Examples are beards and your squirrel. Okay, option D, we have adaptation. That is how an animal adapts and survives or even thrives in its environment. So, option B is correct, estivation. Question number three. The insect trapping movement of the leaves of the Venus flytrap is a behavioral adaptation for what? It is definitely for so not for support. Option B, surviving adverse weather conditions. No. Option C, obtaining food. Venus flytrap is a carnivorous plant, just like uh, you have your California pitcher plant, you have your Drosera capensis. They are all called carnivorous plants. They feed on insects, okay, to obtain their food. Dormancy is a state of inactivity that you see in seed until a favorable weather condition or space condition, environmental condition comes up and they become, they come alive again and get to fruition. Okay, so option C is correct. It's for obtaining food. So do not forget that preparation is very essential for success. The My School team has provided you with some tools that can enable you gain success in your coming exams. Using the link in the description below, it will take you to the My School site where you can download the My School mobile app or the My School software. This is to enable you to become more confident and competent in attaining the success that you desire in your coming exams. So join me as we tackle question number four. Animals are said to be gregarious when they do what? Gregarious means to be sociable. Okay, so option A. They survive adverse conditions of cold weather. No, that is hibernation. Option B, they transmit information from one individual to the other. That's you know, probably when you see a lioness leading its um, 
some of its members in hunting down a prey, okay? So they can use their tail to communicate the kind of formation they use in hunting down their prey. Option C, when they are of the same species moving together in a group. This is definitely a definition when it is said that animals are said to be gregarious. Like for instance, you see a, a, some group of kangaroos, okay, as mob. You can see horses as eggs. You can see buffalo as gang. You can see bats, they live together or they exist together in colony or cloud. So gregarious means that they are sociable, they move together, organisms of the same species. D, they give an alarm to alert others to show the normal protective behavior of the group when danger is threatening them. No. So option C is very correct. So do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and tap on bell notifications so you can get informed as we release the next videos. Down to question number five. The type of nutrition shown by Spirogyra is what? At first, you should know that Spirogyra has a greenish color and that is because it contains or it has chlorophyll. So, going through the options together, option A, symbiosis. Symbiosis is a kind of relationship between organisms whereby they benefit from each other without harming one another. So, this is not symbiosis. B, holozoic nutrition. This is a kind of nutrition whereby an organism depends on another for its food. Okay, so example like uh, an animal or human like us, humans like us, depending on other animals or other food sources to get our food. Chemosynthesis is chemosynthetic um, nutrition, is a kind of nutrition whereby an organism is able to generate its own nutrients or food without the use of sunlight. So just imagine some bacteria living deep down in the sea, over like 6,000 feet below the sea surface. So sunlight does not reach there. So they use the kind of chemical energy produced from the chemical process to obtain their food. We have the olefitic nutrition. This is the kind of nutrition whereby an organism, either a plant, most especially a plant in this context, they are able to make their own food. Example of olefitic nutrition involves the process of photosynthesis. So, spirogyria contains chlorophyll necessary for photosynthesis. So, option D is very correct. Question number six. Raw materials required by green plants to manufacture their food are what? They are majorly inorganic materials which involve carbon dioxide and water to form glucose. Okay, that's the chemical equation for photosynthesis. So option B is correct, inorganic substances. Question number seven, which of the following pairs of organisms are photosynthetic? Option A, amoeba. Amoeba obtains its food by engulfing its food from its environment, so this is out. Uglina, uglina is referred to or can be referred to as a mexotroph that can use the holophytic mode of nutrition or the saprophytic mode of nutrition. So this option is still viable. Let's look at Chlamydomonas. Chlamydomonas definitely uses the holophytic mode of nutrition. So without further ado, going through the rest option, option B is very correct. Oglina and Chlamydomonas. So please remember that there are several solution providers on the my school websites that are waiting for you to ask your questions and gain more clarity. So with the link I have provided you in the description below, you can access the my school website and get the feedback that you need from the solution providers. So join me as we tackle question number eight. The type of nutrition in which two organisms of different species live together and derive nutrients from each other is what? So we are going to take it that this kind of nutrition whereby two different organisms or organisms of different species they live on each other without harming one another this is definitely a symbiotic nutrition example fungi and agate to form a lichen for example again cattle egret and cattle themselves so option a is very correct perhaps you would like to share knowledge with us on any of the questions we have solved so far Please use the comment section below by indicating the question number and the explanation you'd like to share. 
Join me as we tackle question number nine. Which of the following statements about the similarities in plant and animal transport is correct? So let's say option A. Materials and homos are transported in fluid form. So this is the only similarity from the options we are provided with that fits what we are looking for. Because materials and homos are transported in fluid form both in plants and animals. So option A is correct. Question number 10. Which of the following describes the function of the lymph? Okay, so remember that the lymphofluid contain white blood cell which defends the body against arm, okay, or against intrusion invaders. So going through our options together, option D is correct. So the major function that we can see about the lymph is body defense, option D. On to question number 11. One of the major ways in which blood is able to defend the body against disease-causing organisms is called what? It's referred to as clumping. This is how it happens. The blood sticks pathogens together to form clumps and this clump will be engulfed by the phagocytes present. So, option B is very correct. Down to question number 12. Which of the following is not a transmittable character in plants? So if you go through our options together, starting from D, hemophilia is a genetic condition whereby an individual is unable to make its blood clot or the blood in his, in his body system cannot clot, okay, cannot come together. Probably when there is a wound clot, the, to stop bleeding would not be easy because the blood there will not clot to reduce or prevent more bleeding. So hemophilia is a genetic condition or disorder that can only be found in human system or in human description. So option D is very correct. So we have question number 13. Inheritable character or features possessed by an organism can be referred to as what? This is referred to as traits or character. So option C is correct. So don't forget that the MySchool tools are available for your use. You can get the MySchool mobile app or purchase the MySchool software using the link in the description below that takes you to the MySchool website so you can get further instructions. So join me as we tackle question number 14. One of the following is a process of transmission of hereditary characteristics by chromosomes. Okay, so if you go through the options together with me, you realize that option D states that dictating the formation of a protein by a gene in chromosome. So option D is very correct. So do not forget to hit the like button click on the subscribe button and tap on bell notification so you can get informed as we release the next videos. So we have question number 15. The attachment of the embryo to the wall of the uterus is called implantation. That is definitely the uh, answer to the question we have above. The placentation is the arrangement of oval in the ovary. So we are not going through all of the options. So B is just implantation of the embryo to the wall of the uterus. Popularly or in layman's language, you can refer to it as the womb. So option B is correct. Question 16. Which of the reproductive system in mammals secretes a part of the seminal fluid which raises the pH of the fluid in the female reproductive system. So going through our options, I will pick up postural gland because it contributes about 30% of the seminal fluid, making it to contain essential nutrients like calcium, like sodium, like zinc, like citric acid, like acid phosphates, and what have you. So all of your, these options, option B is correct. Question 17, the part labeled A in the diagram above is used for what? So look at the part labeled A. This is either referred to as the operculum or the gill cover or the gill floor. This assists in gaseous exchange between the gills inside of the fish. So this part protects the gills. So this is definitely for gaseous exchange. So going through our options, 
together, we'll see that option C is very correct. So, do not forget that asking the right questions bring clarity. So that implies that if you want to ask any questions right now on the spot, you can use the link in the description below that I have provided for you that will take you to the My School website where several solution providers are waiting just for you. So we have question number 18. The above diagram can be classified under which phylum in the animal kingdom? Okay, so we have the phylum of nematodas. Those are for ringworms. So this is definitely not a worm. This is a fish. Cordata, this talks about backbone. And this is what works for a fish. We have coriferas. They are majorly simple aquatic um, organisms like sponges, the aquatic plants. So this is out of it. We have analida that talks about earthworm, leeches, and what have you. So going through our options, this is an animal that has a backbone. So this is Cordata, belongs to the phylum Cordata and the subphylum of vertebrata. So option B is very correct. So perhaps you have better explanation to any of the questions we have tackled so far. Please, I do like to know, just indicate the question number and the solutions you like to share. So we are on to question number 19. One important characteristic of green plants is that they are autotrophic, that is, they can manufacture their, their food by themselves. They practice holophytic nutrition. So, option C is correct. So, here we have question number 20. A virus can sometimes be regarded as a living organism because it reproduces in living cells. Okay, so one of the characteristics of living things is the ability to reproduce its kind. So, option D is correct. So, we've come to the end of this segment, but there is definitely more to come. If you enjoy this sort of content and you'd like me to bring you more of them, please hit on the like button, click on the subscribe button, and tap on bell notifications so you can get informed as we release the next videos.